Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the song that you brought to us. I would like to extend my appreciation to all of you who has shown your participation in our program and especially for responding to my plea this morning. Pay attention when we start our worship. I especially commend these two rows here. They're very attentive. They don't talk. They don't look back. But I'm still disappointed with this row here. This row here, out of all of you, maybe only three are keeping quiet. The rest are still talking and laughing while they were singing. Probably it's, there's something funny in the way they sing, is it? How about if you guys will sing now? Then we will laugh at you also. Okay? There is a time for you to joke and it is not this place. If you want to laugh and tickle your friend, it's not in here. So may I once again ask your participation because this is a worship program. Instrumental meditation number is to set the mood for worship. But when it is being done, you are still laughing around left and right and front. Uh, these other two rows are doing quite well. Thank you very much. So I hope that now we will spend time not only during when I talk, but starting tomorrow, since we come here, once we start, once the participants come forward, please. Pay attention. And we will refrain ourselves from talking. I know uh, you want to go home very quickly because it's already afternoon and this is your last period. But let us just spend this couple of minutes together so that we can learn something from our series. Can we do that? Okay. I cannot hear you very well. Can we do that? Thank you very much. Our title this afternoon is My Identity Christ, Christ in My Appearance. And I think this is a quite an interesting topic for us because all of us have always try to do our best to look the best we can become in the way we dress and in the way we compose ourselves and in the everything that we do I want to bring our attention to 1 Corinthians 6 19 and 20 Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Another verse is in Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are honorable, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and is, there is any praise, think about these things. These two passages will be the foundation of our study this afternoon when we talk about appearance. Before that, let us uh, bow our heads again for prayer to ask for the Holy Spirit. I will pray. Father, we thank you that this afternoon we can gather once again to study you. We pray for your Holy Spirit to be with us. Help us to be attentive. Help us to control ourselves.
so we may spend this short time delving into your word so that we will find out our identity in Christ. Please be with us. This is what we ask from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a very popular saying that your clothes reflect your personality and thinking. And according to that saying, the uniqueness and dress is appreciated when worn at a right occasion. There is a dress for sleeping, the pajamas. There is a dress for coming to church, your church clothes. There is a dress for going to school, your school uniform. Even in school, you also have your PE uniform. And so, these are all made for its varying purposes. And so, we need to know what kind of dress is appropriate for each occasion that we are attending to. It is very crucial in our appearance. But aside from dress, there are also several things that we need to know about how we project our appearance to others. And we are going to, we are going to look at it in the following slides. It is uh, important for us that we project our appearance not only the way we dress, but our body as a whole. Our body as a whole. By presenting a proper appearance, then in it we can shine out our Christ-likeness. In the Bible, we have several passages that encourage us to be dressed properly, to show a good appearance. First Peter 3 verses 3 say, Do not let your adorning be external. It talks about the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. In 1 Timothy 2 verses 9 and 10, likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. In Leviticus 19 verse 28, it says, You shall not make any cuts on your body or the dead or tattoo yourselves. So it is very, uh, it is very important on how we project ourselves, not by too much adornment or a fancy dress or having tattoos in our body. But aside from that, as I said, we're going to see that there are also other aspects in our body that we need to take care of so that when we project our appearance to others, it will be a good appearance. First, if you already seen on the screen, is about body odor. Body odor. Uh, if you see on TV, there are so many kinds of products that will help you to prevent your bad body odor like Rexona and many others, you know? And it is, it is not our fault if we have body odor. I first realized that I had body odor when I was grade six. You know, when I came home, I sat on the couch and I started reading. And then I started to smell. Where is this smell coming from? I went to the kitchen. It's not from the kitchen, but it is still there. I went to my room. Oh, the smell is still there. You know, I went back to my seat. Hey, I smell the chair. Ah, the smell is still there. So I smell my clothes. It's not my clothes. So I go, oh, the smell pala is from here. When I was grade six, and you know, our bodies, they are, they are very tricky, especially at that age, and especially at our age right now in academy. 
our body's chemicals, they are growing, they are doing all sorts of things so that our body will spurt and grow up. And one of those things are the sweat glands are producing bacteria in uh, our underarms, in our armpits, and that is one causing smell. It is also because of the food that we eat that produces the bad odor in our body. So please don't blame yourself if you have body odor. But we have to realize that if we have body odor, we have to try as much as possible to reduce it in many ways. To keep our hygiene, we have to try to reduce it because if not, we will be, we will be faced with many people maybe even closing their nose or maybe they will immediately take two steps backward so that they will not feel the effect or smell the effect of your body odor. You see, there's this cartoon that says, they close his eyes and then he starts sniffing and he said, oh, by the smell, by sniffing the people he knows that it is an English woman, an Irish man, and a Spanish. Because they have their distinct smells. Yes, we also have our own distinct smells. So, we have to, we have to take care of this. There's a research done, and these are the people who do research on how to treat body odor. Imagine they, 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 they get paid a lot of money by sniffing the underarm of the, of the people who volunteer. And then based on the sniff, they will try to prescribe a kind of medication that will help. Because body odor, it affects millions of people. Some people don't care about the smell, but others, they suffer. And it causes so many things for a person. They will feel, they don't feel any more self-confident because they stink and they want remedies for that. Yeah? They want remedies. Look at the cartoon. I don't know about you, Bruno, but I smell a rat. And they're both rats. And so we have to take care of this. There are some tips on how we can prevent our body odor. Body odor in other names is bronchidrosis. Bronchidrosis. If you want to get rid of body odor, first course of action would be to take a bath. After bathing, use quality deodorant. And when you put on your clothes, put on a new set of clothes. Don't put on something that you already wore yesterday. If you wear, if you already stink yesterday, you take a bath, you smell good, and then you put on the clothes that you used yesterday, how will you smell? Like yesterday. Okay? So if you have body odor, don't worry about it. Just try to take care of it. You know, we are still young. That's why our bodies are producing all this stuff. Just take care of it. And if you, if you as a friend, you know that your friend has body odor, don't be embarrassed to tell him or her, Oi, friend. Take care of your body odor. Or for his birthday, you buy him a Rexona. Huh? Or an Avon. And explain if he doesn't know how to use it. This is for your underarm. Okay? So, let's take, a, take care of that. Don't be ashamed about it. Just take care of it. Another good friend of the body odor is bad breath. They are best friends. 14 and 25% of Americans and 35 to 45% of Americans they have they suffer chronic bad breath and I think most of us 99% of us have bad breath when we wake up in the morning isn't it yes because also of the bacteria that form in our mouth especially if we didn't brush our teeth the night before we woke up oh it will smell more terrible no? if you if you eat some some kinds of food that will really enhance the bad breath, it is terrible. Estimates, you see in America, they estimated 
that $10 billion a year are being spent for buying for buying mint, mouthwash, gums, pills, toothpaste, and all kinds of things that will help that will help with the bad breath. Ten billion dollars. Imagine that. So Colgate has a lot of money because they produce all uh, this uh, for dental hygiene. So if you have bad breath, oh, one thing, one cause of bad breath also could be your teeth, that you have uh, tartar in your teeth. It causes bad breath. It is another turn off, a best friend of body odor. So the advice is for us to brush our teeth, gargle after eating, and make a dental a priority for dental hygiene. There is a there are some tips that are given for us that we should brush our teeth at least twice daily with fluoride toothpaste and each time you brush use your toothbrush or a tongue scraper to clean the top surface of the tongue and then use dental floss to remove food particles from between your teeth at least once a day if you don't have dental floss and you feel have long hair and your hair is thick you can use your hair You can try it, you know. If it breaks, use another hair. Use dental floss, okay? Use antiseptic mouthwash after brushing your teeth. If you wear dentures, take them out at night. Brush them and leave them to soak overnight. If you wear removable braces, retainers, take them out, clean them at interval. And most importantly, visit your dentist at least twice a year to check your teeth, to clean your teeth when it is necessary. The next one that we need to take care of is your hair. You don't want to have bad hair like this model or like this lady or like this guy. He looks cute, does he? Or like this man. Although we are an international community. Each of our cultures have different perspectives of how we do our hair. But I believe each culture has a culture of neatness. We may want to keep our hair tidy. We want to make, keep our hair clean. And so, the advice is to have hair that is not covering your ears that are not covering the front of your face and keep it tidy because fly away hair does not inspire confidence or indicate orderliness the next one is fingernails you know i remember when i was in the elementary my teacher will line us will line us up before we go into the classroom and say okay show your hands and we check our hands and the teacher will check oh is it short enough or not oh he, and he has a nail cutter if it is long they immediately clean it for us but while we are in high school of course our homeroom will not check hands no so we have to take care of this because this is very important you know we may not want to have this kind of fingernails or like this man this man his name is Sridhar Kilal. He holds the world record for the longest fingernails ever reached on a single hand. 6.15 meters. Isn't that amazing? I wonder how he can scratch his head. Or how he can, he can hold things with this kind of fingernails. Oh, another one is a lady. Lee Redmond. She has shorter fingernails, only 35 inches in length. But you wouldn't want this kind of fingernails, would you? Would you like to achieve this kind of fingernails? I don't think so. Oh, how will you play your instrument, musical instruments, your piano, your violin, if you have this kind of hair, of hair, of fingernails? Keep your fingernails short, clean, and neat. 
And then one thing also is that as much as possible, if your fingernails are good, you don't need to put any color on it. You don't need to put any color on it. I don't know how the school policy, I think the school will not allow us to put colors. You don't need to put any color on your on your fingernails. Another one is about makeup. Makeup. Okay? Makeup, the purpose of makeup is actually to enhance your, your beauty. To enhance. Meaning, if you are already beautiful or good looking, you don't need to wear makeup. Yeah? Or if the purpose is to enhance your face, your be the beauty of your face, you just use minimum makeup. Apply it lightly. Because God has created us with our own distinct faces. Whether we like it or not, that is how we look like. Like for me, I don't need to wear makeup. I know I am round. Why should I make makeup so that I will look oval? No, I don't need to. Of course, because I'm a guy also. But the, the point here is, to project our good appearance, we don't really need to put excessive makeup or even put makeup at all because we should be happy with one. And now we will talk about dress. <laughs> Look at that man in pink. Is he wearing a dress? Oh, he's not wearing a dress. Well, this girl is a uh, fashion. This one also. And this one, this is an ideal one. You see, in talking about dress, dress as we have mentioned in the beginning of, the, of our talk, dress is very important. Dress is very important. Why? Because the dress influence, it tells a lot about, about us who is wearing the clothes or dress. There was once a survey done among Christian men, you know, in a church on the subject of women's clothing. Women's clothing. And then they responded, one of them responded that this subject is the greatest challenge in my life. Another man said, men are created in such a way to be stimulated by sight. Another man said, demon influence and demon possession is rampant. Evil triumphs when the church does nothing. And so, by, in this survey, they found out that even among Christian men, they tend to think differently when a lady or a girl dresses up in ways that will tempt or that will initiate something from the men. When they were asked about short skirt and short dresses, one man said like this, the higher up on a woman's leg, the more tempting it becomes. This is a Christian man. And about tight clothing, tight clothing, tight skirts, tight blouses, form-fitting jeans, one man said, is very inviting and a potential for me to see it. So, girls, this is especially for you. We have to find such principles. We have to know what the principles for us to dress properly so that when we present ourselves in public, we do not become object that can make other people sin. Back in the back in the 1990s, I remember when I was in high school, all our classmates, the girls, when they wear casual clothes, they will usually wear jeans and they will wear t-shirts. But when I was teaching in my alma mater in Manado, I was teaching there 
I was surprised in 2000, 2001. I was surprised to see that the trend now is not to wear long jeans or to wear a shirt. The trend in 2001, I noticed in that school, is that when they want to wear casual clothes, they wear shorts. Shorts and t-shirts that, that is sleeveless. Our values change because of the influence of artists, celebrities, and other models. And so because our values tend to change from time to time, it is important for us to know the correct principles of, of wearing clothes. There is a church father, Clement of Alexandria. This was written in 195 AD. Who were born at the time? None of us. He said like this, By no means are women to be allowed to uncover and exhibit any part of their bodies, lest both fall, the men being incited to look, and the woman by attracting to themselves the eyes of the man. So you see the values of the church fathers, they have hold a high standard in clothing. And so now let us look at the principles. For the, for the remaining time now that we have, we're going to look at the principles of proper dress. I got this from Dr. Samuel Bakioki's book, the late Dr. Samuel Bakioki. The first principle is this. Dress and appearance are an important index of Christian character. Clothes and appearance are most powerful non-verbal communicators, not only communicating our status, whether we are wealthy, whether we don't have enough money, but it also communicates our moral values. In other words, we are what we wear. Sometimes our culture dictates us to wear something. Well, that, I don't think that is much of a problem. But if it is our values are in, important from another set of values that it destroys, it destroys our Christian character. The Bible recognizes the importance of dress and ornaments as indicated by the numerous stories, allegories, and admonitions that we find regarding appropriate and uh, inappropriate adorning. Our outward appearance is visible and silent testimony of our Christian values. Some people dress and adorn their bodies with clo costly clothes and jewelry to please themselves. But sometimes, we are also tempted to wear costly, costly clothes. I don't know with you, but sometimes uh, I will go to Ukai Ukai and then look for an expensive brand and buy it. It is only 50 pesos. But sometimes these this tendencies to follow what is a trend, what is a fashion, current fashion, sometimes it hurts our moral values. It hurts our identity as Christians. And so, the first principle is to dress. Our dress and appearance are an important index of Christian character. Principle number two. Adorning our bodies with colorful cosmetics, glittering jewelry, and luxurious clothes reveals inner pride and vanity, which are destructive to ourselves and others. We have found this truth brought out by several negative examples by the admonitions of Paul and Peter. Isaiah in Old, Old Testament, he reproves a wealthy Jewish woman for their pride by adorning their bodies from head to foot with glittering jewelry and expensive clothes. They seduced the leaders who eventually led the whole nation into disobedience and divine punishment. And so this is a danger 
if we want to adorn ourselves. Too much, too much adornment. You see, there are many cases, if you watch the news, there are many cases that a lady will be robbed by a thief while they are sitting in a jeepney. Suddenly, somebody will just grab their necklace and they will complain to the police station and say, oh, that is a 24 karat gold and everything. But actually, if you, if you want to look at it closely, this lady is in public. This lady is in a place where there are many people who might be tempted to steal her jewelry. Is it her, is it her fault? That, uh, is it the thief's fault that he gets the jewelry? Yes, in one way, that, that does not belong to the thief. But in another way, the lady also is putting temptation for the thief. And so, this principle tells it out. When we have too much to put in ourselves, it reveals inner pride, destructive to ourselves and others. Principle number three. Principle number three. To experience inner spiritual renewal and reconciliation with God, it is necessary to remove all outward besetting objects of idolatry, including jewelry and ornaments. If we remember the stories in the Bible, at Shechem, Jacob called his family members to remove their outward idols. And in the Mount of Horeb, the Israelites were asked to remove their ornaments so that Jesus, God can see who they are. In the Bible, it clearly says that in order to have a proper relationship with God, we have to remove our idols, our ornaments, our adornment so that God can see us. We need to remove from our hearts the idols we cherish, whether they are jewelry, cosmetics, or immodest clothing. Principle number four. Principle number four. Christians should dress in a modest and decent way, showing respect for God themselves and others. I am very thankful that uh, since yesterday until today, I have seen all the participants. They are all dressed up very beautifully. They are all dressed up very beautifully, decent. When in this principle, when he says Christians should dress in a modest and decent way, it is referring to what Apostle Paul says, Cosmios and Idos, in 1 Timothy 2 verse 9. Well-ordered, well-ordered clothing. To dress modestly and decently implies that clothing must provide sufficient covering for the body so that others are not embarrassed or tempted. Wow. So others are not embarrassed. I remember when I was pastoring a church in Manado. They were going to have, they were going to have a wedding in in my church, in the church where I was pastoring. And then all the abbeys, the brides bridesmaids, they arrived, they arrived in front of the church with their dresses that is only up to here, up to here. What do you call that? Only up to the breast. It doesn't cover up to the shoulder. Oh. And then our head deaconesses, an old lady, she came to me and said, Pastor, I think we cannot let the wedding go through. I said, why, sister? Oh yes, look at their clothes. Look at what they're wearing. It is not fit to come into the church. And so I said, oh, I feel sorry then for the one who will get married. Because they will have no abai. So finally, the, the head deaconess said, maybe we can have a solution. So she talked to them and they went to the salon where they borrowed those clothes and they provided a shawl. You know, a shawl to cover their shoulders and everything. To cover their shoulders. But you see, like I said just now, sometimes our values change. 
our values change. Sometimes when uh, before when people come to church, they dress very well. They dress decently. But now I notice that when people come to church, they wear a skirt that is already here. And then they wear spaghetti tops. Is that a way to respect God in the house of worship? I don't think that is the proper way to show respect to God. Principle number five. Christians should dress soberly, restraining any desire to exhibit themselves by wearing eye-catching clothes, cosmetics, or jewelry. This is a very good principle. We have found that the term soberly means that mental attitude of self-control, an attitude that determines all virtues. Paul recognized that self-control is indispensable for a Christian. It is very important for a Christian. When, when we dress, we should not dress up in order to glorify ourselves. We should not do that. And the last principle is Christians should respect gender distinctions in clothing by wearing clothes that affirm their male or female identities. Meaning that girls should not be wearing boys' clothes. Boys do not wear girls' clothes. You know, when I first came to the Philippines, in 1983 I was surprised when I saw on TV at the time I don't know was that 1983 when I saw it but at the time I the first time in my life I saw in a singing contest that half half you know one half he was uh, Alex so he, he is a man with a suit and he starts singing a man's voice and then when it's time to sing the lady's voice, he turned around and it was Alexia with a dress, with a dress half made. Probably we laugh at it, but sometimes this is a thing that people do. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 expressly says that it is prohibited for a man to wear women's dress and vice versa, especially for a woman to wear men's dress. Clothes define our identity and help us develop a new identity. Not only it is true that we are what we wear, but also we become what we wear. A woman who wants to function as a man will most likely dress like a man. Do you believe that? Yes. If you notice, if you notice when you are out in the mall or something, if you see two women, two women walking together, one wears a jeans, has a short haircut, and has a shirt, he wants, she wants to function as a he. She wants to function as a he. And also vice versa. When you go to salons and uh, the, uh, when you want to have your hair cut, oh, you will see a man wearing a dress. And you say, Oh, sir, ano gusto mo? Haircut. <laughs> ah. They associate themselves as a girl. They wear some dress so that they, they associate themselves as a girl. So you see all these principles that we see are for us to do it. Let us review once again, okay? Principle number one, dress and appearance is an important index of Christian character. First of all, dress and appearance is our Christian character. Principle number two, when we adorn ourselves excessively of cosmetics, jewelry, luxurious clothes, it, we are destructive to ourselves and others. So clothing, too much extravagant clothing, it destroys ourselves and destroys others. 
Principle number three, to experience spiritual renewal, we should remove all our idols or our excessive clothing and jewelry. And principle number four, Christians should dress in a modest and decent way so that we can show respect to God, themselves, and others. Principle number five, Christians should dress soberly, be restraining any desire to exhibit themselves. Dressing up should not be to exhibit ourselves. Okay? And the last one is, we should not wear what we are not supposed to be wearing. We are not supposed to be wearing. And so, this is what I want to leave with you this afternoon. In order to find our identity in Christ, we have to have an outward appearance that will reflect humility, meekness, simplicity, so that Christ can also associate it to us. This morning we have studied about giving the best because God has given us the best. And this afternoon, we want to show the best appearance as a Christian in order to respond to what God has given us, the best things for us. In closing, I want to tell you this short illustration. A successful attorney was surprised one day when his young daughter burst into his office and complained that a man had insulted her as she was walking along the street, this young girl said, It was awful, Daddy! She said furiously, And I think there should be a law against these things. Because she knows that her father is an attorney. And so the attorney looked at the daughter from her head to toe. And this is what he told her. Daughter, if you don't want to be insulted, Take down the signs. If you do that and act ladylike, no one will insult you. And the teenager, he, she looked insulted and angry and he said, Why? What do you mean take down the signs? Don't you care what happens to your own daughter? And the lawyer replied, Tony replied, Certainly, I do care about more than what I can express. But I have noticed that you are dressing pretty much as the crowd dresses. You know, low cut in front, sleeveless, too tight, and far too short. When a girl dresses like that, she can expect to be insulted. And so, my dear young friends, clothes do not make a Christian. But Christians reveal their identity through clothes and appearance. The Bible does not prescribe a standardized dress for Christian men and women to wear, but it calls us to follow simplicity and unpretentiousness of Jesus' lifestyle, even in our clothes and appearance. In order to have our identity in Christ, we have to follow Jesus' simplicity. And it takes courage. It takes courage to stand out differently from the crowd. It takes courage. It takes courage to distinguish between what is in, what is fashionable, and what is simple, and what is biblical. And so we need to have that courage to reveal the loveliness of Christ's character not only by the external decoration of our bodies, but with the internal beautification of our soul. And so our outward appearance is a constant silent witness of our Christian identity. May it always tell the world that we live to glorify God and not ourselves. And so this afternoon, my challenge to you is... Dress simply. Do not put excessive things on our body that will make a center of attraction. And finally, you will be insulted.
dressing, take care of our hygiene so that we will live a comfortable life in a social life as well as our, in our private lives. Who among us would like to respond to live a simple life so that we can show an outward appearance Christ like this. May I invite you to stand up? We're going to pray for our Tell you bar heads for prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for reminding us this afternoon of the proper way to compose ourselves and to take care of ourselves. So that we can project our appearance to others in a way that will always and constantly reflect Jesus in our lives. We want to find our identity in you. And we have learned that in order to have a proper outward appearance to others, so that others may know that you live in our hearts, is that to dress simply and to take care of our bodies because our bodies are the temple. And so this afternoon, I pray for our young friends. They have taken the stand want to pledge to find their identity in Christ by showing an outward appearance that will reflect Jesus. In their lives. Help us as we make this stand and help us with your Holy Spirit to be reminded every day about the principles of providing an outward appearance that will show. Thank you, dear Father, for our young friends who have taken this promise. Help them. We dedicate them into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray.